we are going to draw the molecular orbital diagram for O2 with a minus one charge. We're going to begin by drawing the atomic orbitals for a single oxygen atom. If we include the inner shells, then we have a 1s orbital, then we have a 2s orbital, then we have three degenerate, meaning equal energy, 2p orbitals. Now these are normally filled with electrons, but let's get to the diagram itself first. This molecule is made of two oxygens, so you need to copy out this same molecule, this same atomic orbital scheme on the other side of your paper, making sure that the 2s energy levels are at the same height, the 1s energy levels are at the same height, and the 2p energy levels are at the same height. They're the same atom, so they have the same relative energies. Now, what happens when the 1s orbitals overlap? So, the answer is that they create two molecular orbitals. The lower energy one is called sigma 1s. The higher energy one is called sigma 1s antibonding. So we put a little asterisk there. These are supposed to be symmetrically spread out relative to where the 1s is. So you haven't created or lost any energy. The average energy here is the same as the average energy here. Lots of teachers will have you draw little dotted lines to show where those are leading, but with a marker, that's gonna make this pretty messy. When the 2s orbitals overlap, you're going to end up with a sigma 2s bonding orbital and a sigma 2s antibonding orbital. Great. Now what I find kids get tripped up on is the arrangement of the bond, the molecular orbitals when the two p's come together. You'll notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six atomic orbitals that are going to overlap here. For oxygen and farther to the right, oxygen, fluorine, and neon, you should remember that sigma 2p bonding is lowest in energy. Then you have the pi 2p next lowest. Pi 2p antibonding is next, and sigma 2p antibonding is after that. This is the arrangement for oxygen, fluorine, and neon when they bond with each other. The reason this order is different than for boron, carbon, nitrogen is because of the size of the oxygen atom and the pull that they have on the orbitals themselves. What matters to you probably is the fact that oxygen brings eight electrons each and there are two of them. Then because of the extra negative charge, you have to add an extra electron. So we have 17 electrons total. Your job is to fill this from the bottom up. What is that? The uh, uh, Aufbau principle. And you need 17 electrons total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Notice how I spread them out before I doubled them up. That's Hun's rule. So... Here's my finished molecular orbital diagram. Again, your teacher probably wants dotted lines to show how these are splitting. But this right here shows where the electrons are in the molecular overlaps. Now your teacher might be asking you for the bond order of this, which is one half of the number of electrons in bonding orbitals, that's non-asterisked, minus the number of electrons in anti-bonding orbitals. So in this case, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten electrons in bonding orbitals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons in anti-bonding orbitals. Just making sure those add to 17. That's great. So I get a bond order of 1.5. Cool. Um, there's your molecular orbital diagram. Congratulations. Bye.